Anna is a 38-year-old lady who presents to the emergency department with a severe headache, a rapidly falling GCS, and marked ptosis and drooping of her left eyelid. When the doctors perform some examinations, they notice Anna is displaying signs of oculomotor nerve palsy and organize an emergency CT angiogram. This reveals a cerebral aneurysm located at the posterior communicating artery in the brain. This aneurysm is causing compression of Anna's left oculomotor nerve at the brainstem and subsequent paralysis of important extraocular muscles of the eye. My name's Aisha and in the next 5 minutes, we'll cover everything you need to know about the 12 cranial nerves in relation to the brainstem. We'll then return back to the case and work out what's happened to Anna. Remember, we've done the reading so you don't have to. The brainstem is a stalk-like projection which makes up the distal part of the brain. The brainstem is divided into three main regions. The midbrain, which is the smallest and most superior aspect of the brainstem, measuring at around 2 cm in length. The pons, which forms the most anterior aspect of the brainstem. And the medulla, which is the most narrow and distal part of the brainstem. The medulla oblongata then continues inferiorly to form the spinal cord. These three regions are important in regulating things like breathing, heart rate, but also house cranial nerve nuclei, which give rise to cranial nerves. These cranial nerves come off at different points across the brainstem, where they leave the cranial cavity to supply and innovate important structures. Before we go through the cranial nerves which come off the brainstem, it's worth remembering that the first and second cranial nerve, that's the olfactory and optic nerves, do not come off the brainstem and instead originate from the cerebrum. Starting with the midbrain, the third cranial nerve, the oculomotor nerve, originates from the anterior midbrain between two stalks, known as cerebral peduncles. The space between these two cerebral peduncles is known as the interpeduncular fossa. Importantly, the oculomotor nerve has to pass between the superior cerebellar artery and the posterior cerebral artery to enter the cavernous sinus. These arteries form the circle of Willis, which is a circulatory anastomosis that supplies the brain. The fourth cranial nerve, the trochlear nerve, comes off the posterior aspect of the midbrain and has the longest intracranial length within the cranial cavity. The trochlear nerve then emerges across to the anterior surface of the midbrain. The pons is the largest part of the midbrain and comes from the word meaning bridge in Latin. The pons is important in connecting the midbrain lying superiorly from the medulla lying inferiorly. The next four cranial nerves originate from the anterior aspect of the pons. The fifth cranial nerve, the trigeminal nerve, originates from the lateral aspect of the mid pons. The sixth, seventh, and eighth cranial nerves originate from the pontomedullary junction. This is simply the junction between the pons and the medulla. If you look into this in greater detail, the sixth cranial nerve, the abducens nerve, originates close towards the midline of the pontomedullary junction, whereas the seventh cranial nerve, the facial nerve, comes off the lateral aspect of the pontomedullary junction. The eighth cranial nerve, the vestibular cochlear nerve, originates from just lateral to the facial nerve. The last region of the brainstem is the medulla oblongata, which gives rise to the last four cranial nerves. Observing the medulla from the anterior view, a pair of swellings, called the olives, are located on either side of the pyramids. The ninth cranial nerve, the glossopharyngeal nerve, comes off the upper aspect of the medulla behind the olives. The tenth cranial nerve, the vagus nerve, also originates posterior to the olives in a groove between the olives and a structure called the inferior cerebellar peduncles. The 11th cranial nerve, the accessory nerve, has a spinal and cranial component. It's the cranial component which originates from the lateral and inferior aspect of the medulla just posterior to the olives. Lastly, the 12th cranial nerve, the hypoglossal nerve, extends from the medulla just anterior to the olive at a junction called the ventrolateral sulcus. Now, let's review what we've covered so far. We know the olfactory and optic nerves don't originate from the brainstem, but the midbrain gives rise to two cranial nerves. These are the oculate motor and trochlear nerves. The pons give rise to four cranial nerves, which are the trigeminal, the abducens, and the facial and vestibular cochlear nerves, 
which come off next to each other. The medulla gives rise to the last four cranial nerves, which are the glossopharyngeal nerve, the vagus nerve, the accessory nerve, and the hypoglossal nerves. I like to remember the 2-4-4 rule. Two cranial nerves come off the midbrain, four cranial nerves come off the pons, and four cranial nerves come from the medulla. Here is a diagram showing important foramina within the cranial base, which allow cranial nerves to either enter or leave the cranial cavity. We'll be covering this in greater detail in our upcoming tutorials, where we'll take a closer look at each cranial nerve in depth. Now, let's go back to Anna who presented to A&E with third nerve or oculomotor nerve palsy. The oculomotor nerve is important in supplying key extraocular muscles of the eye, the eyelid, and allowing pupils to constrict as part of the accommodation reflex. Patients with damage to this nerve present with symptoms such as ptosis, which is drooping of the eyelid due to paralysis of the levator pulparis superioris, and fixed and dilated pupils due to paralysis of the sphincter pupillae muscle. The oculomotor nerve supplies all the extraocular muscles of the eye except for the lateral rectus, which causes abduction of the eye, and the superior oblique muscle, which causes depression of the eye. As the supply to the remaining extraocular muscles is cut off, it's the unopposed action of the lateral rectus and superior oblique muscle, which causes a down and out appearance. Aneurysms at the posterior communicating artery account for around 15 to 25 percent of all intracranial aneurysms, and one in five patients with posterior communicating artery aneurysms also present with oculomotor nerve palsy. Treatments would usually involve performing a surgery known as an anterior clinodectomy and surgical clipping of the aneurysm. Visualization of the aneurysm is vital, and so an anterior clinodectomy involves removal of the anterior clinoid process of the sphenoid bone, which is commonly done using high-speed drilling techniques. This allows visualization of the internal carotid artery and subsequent clipping of the aneurysm. And there we go, we've covered all the cranial nerves in relation to the brainstem and learnt a little bit about oculomotor nerve palsy and intracranial aneurysms in the process. If you enjoyed this session, subscribe to our channel and like the video, and leave a comment below with what you'd like to see us cover next. Thank you for listening and have a great day.